Greetings to you from Botswana. I thought I'd like to share a little bit now just about how my wife and I were led to believe in a post-tribulation rapture. As because the pre-tribulation rapture has become the popular view, it is not unfortunate, it is not the biblical view. Uh, traditionally through history, up until 1833, the church had always believed that, uh, I mean, most of them had believed that the, the uh, rapture would come after the tribulation, the final tribulation period. At no place in the Bible is the tribulation ever referred to as the great tribulation. It is called a time of great tribulation. Uh, as you know, we use the King James Bible, God's preserved word. And uh, as I go on, I just want to also make mention uh, to look back, to look below in the description for, for different scriptures that you may reference at your own leisure. But so just how we came to know this, uh, because for a long time, you see, I really didn't care about the rapture, meaning I had no interest to know when it was going to happen. Uh, I didn't want to know the specifics. It seemed like there were a lot of learned scholars out there who knew things that I, I mean, I don't know. I, I didn't know how they got them. And I really think it comes back to the church that I was in. Uh, we had a large youth group. It was a very, it was a pretty worldly church overall. Uh, we really didn't talk about the rapture and it was generally treated as unknowable. And so I really didn't think about it much. But what I did think about was learning the word of God, knowing what he had to say, and uh, so I would read and read and read. God had already shown me that by the behavior of men and by the behavior of the professing church, that they were the last days, toward the end of the last days. But of course, we've been in the last days for you know 2,000 years almost. And so as far as the rapture went, the pre-tribulation rapture became very popular. It was broadcast through things like the Left Behind series. But uh, as far as the history goes, no, in 1833, a man named Darby in England, a preacher there, came up with the idea that uh, the rapture could be any minute. It was definitely before the tribulation. It was a very prosperous view. Believe me, every Christian would like to think they're not going to be here for the dark days of Revelation. Uh, that is not what I have found to be true, but it is not really such a bad thing, at least in my view, any, anymore. Uh, the pre-trib rapture theory was then passed on to a very uh, questionable preacher named Cyrus Schofield in America, who was noted for broadcasting this. He did this through the, the Schofield Reference Bible. I think it was first printed in 1909, where he put his own opinions in the Bible next to Scripture. And so, unfortunately, millions of people have looked at this. These, you know, his opinions are our commentary, which today would be accepted, but it shouldn't have been placed next to the verses. People start to take that as if that's exactly what God meant, and it's not. It's what one man thought about things. And so, over time, even though I didn't care about the rapture, I never studied it in Scripture, never looked for it. Uh, my idea was simply to read the Bible over and over and to let things sink in. Some things, some things I might have looked at at times, I looked them up, but I definitely had a, a predisposition disposition against that. And I like people to know that because I wasn't out to look for anything. But when I found out the truth, number one, it comforted me. But the other thing, it's very concerning if most people are headed down the wrong path. Anyway, let me get back to sharing uh, what you might find to be an amusing experience. As I said, I did not really know what to think, but it was apparent over time that I had fallen for the pre-tribulation rapture. I more or less accepted it because everybody said it was so. I didn't have biblical base for it. I don't know if biblical base was ever used for it. They probably cited a few verses and made it look, look good, like when Jesus said, no man can know the day and the hour. Uh, that didn't mean we couldn't know the approximate time, but they, they paint it like you can't, you see. So anyway, one day when Jamie and I were home, uh, it was probably a Saturday, but we both had off work. 
I don't know why, but I stepped out of the home. It was probably going for the mail or something. I was just gone for a little bit. I came back home, uh, maybe 15 minutes, 30 minutes. I'm not sure what I was doing. It was so long ago now. Uh, but she was gone. I mean, the cars were there. Uh, doors were closed. Her purse was around. Her phone, you know, things that would tell me she didn't leave, you know. And I got scared. I thought that the rapture had taken place and I was left behind. I actually turned on the radio to listen to news to see if there were planes crashing, cars crashing, babies disappearing, like the Left Behind series, you know, so dramatizes. And, uh, of course, I wasn't hearing anything. And eventually I found that my wife had, she had crawled into bed. Now, you think I would see her, but we had a water bed, and she had sunken down into the mattress, and she had pulled the covers up over her head so that it really just looked like the bed was made. I didn't, there was hardly a ripple on the top, but that's where she was. And so, of course, uh, I have kept co close track of her ever since. Uh, but, you know, it was, it was something that scared me. And so the pre-trib rapture is not the great thing that so many people make it out to be. Uh, it can be something that is fearful. But even with this, I did not change my interest. I still did not look up to see, boy, I wish this weren't true. Maybe I can find scripture that will help me. No, I didn't see that. But instead, I just continued reading the Bible. And this was over years, brothers and sisters. I mean, over years, you know, maybe a couple years and at one point I got done putting the Bible down and just saying, I can hardly believe this. God has spelled out in his word what to expect for when the Lord returns. It was so plain. It was so obvious. It wasn't in hidden language. It wasn't saying this represents this or it actually meant something else in the Greek or Hebrew. No, it was just as he preserved it in the King James Bible which I had already studied thoroughly and accepted to be that is God's preserved word. Okay. And so uh, I'd like to, to go on a little bit about this. As I find in the pre-trib rapture, there are three key elements to this. Number one is that it could come at any time. At any moment, we could get beamed up. Uh, we don't know when that time will be. The other thing is, that it's completely unknowable. In other words, we won't have a hint as to when it's coming. It's a slight, it's a slight difference. Any moment is slightly different than what I found. And then, of course, the unknowable time. And then finally, of course, it happens before the tribulation. And I have found that scripturally, all of these are, are untrue. I mean, the Bible is very clear about these things. Uh, for one, I mean, we would look in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 3 through 6, where we are being told what withholds, and that is that it is the falling away, which we have been in for well over 100 years now, and it's just been getting faster and faster these last 20 years or so. Uh, and then after the falling away, we will have the revelation of the Antichrist. The beast will come into power. This is again, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. And it's plainly said, now you know what withholds. Now you know what withholds. So at this moment, we're really waiting for, uh, for the revelation of Antichrist, which will not be known by just a few special people. They like to think that Satan loves to make people feel special. He really does. He tried to make himself look special and become God. And now he tries to fool us also. But these people think that if they can identify the Antichrist, then, then Jesus is, is allowed to return. Uh, it doesn't quite go like that. And everyone will know when the beast is in charge of the world. I mean, he will not be a hidden figure by any means. And of course, it is said that this is an un, a completely unknowable time. Oh, we don't know when the time is. Yes, Jesus said that no man will know the day and hour of his return. But this is only a failsafe. Many have predicted that exact day and hour, and we know automatically is it, it is a false prophecy because they have done what Jesus said could not be done. 
And you will find instances like, uh, like the Jehovah's Witnesses have been founded with false uh, predictions of the day of Jesus' return. Uh, Seventh-day Adventists got started with false predictions of the exact time of Jesus' return. But the scripture itself does not say that. In fact, right in places like Matthew 24, uh, Mark 13, uh, Luke 21, it tells us that we will know. We will know the season. We will know the time of the end. He's, Jesus said in, in uh, Matthew 24, for example, as he told his disciples what to expect at the end, the different signs and such, he said, when you see these things, you will know that the end is near, even at the doors. This generation will not pass until all these things are accomplished. So we will know. And it gets pretty blatant. Excuse me as I grab some scripture here. In places like 1 Thessalonians 5. But yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. And it is also said again in like a Revelation 3.3, 3, If you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know the hour that I come upon you. And so you see, we can know the time. We do know that approximate time. There is nothing mysterious about it. Okay. Uh, another thing that is said is before the tribulation. Where in the world do you get that? If you look in Matthew 24, verse 29, and if you're looking in 29 through 31, you know this is inclusive of the Lord's return. The same in Mark 13, 24, or 24 through 27. They both say, after the tribulation of those days. They say it plainly, after the tribulation. That is when the Lord returns. So what's so mysterious about this? Why are we saying, oh, it's, it's before the tribulation? And this really kind of disturbed me a little bit. Oh, and by the way, even in the book of Luke in chapter 21, it doesn't use the word after the tribulation. But if you read verses 21 to verses 25 through 28, you'll know it is the same time being described in Matthew and Mark. And it, so that is after the tribulation. Okay, so this disturbed me a little bit. I'm going to the Lord. I'm like, Lord, why? How could they get this? I've read all through the scripture and I didn't, I saw this plain warning to us. Why? And that is exactly what God means when he warns us of the private interpretation of prophecy. He said, no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. And that's the only way you can get the pre-trib rapture. However, there is probably one other element to look at here. And that is, of course, again, the timing of the Lord's return. One of the problems that exists with the pre-trib rapture is that it separates the return of Christ from the rapture usually by seven years. It says the rapture will come, there will be seven years of tribulation, and then, and then uh, we will have the Lord's return. This is not so. It all happens on the same day, like Jesus plainly said in Luke 17, 26 to 30. It happens on the same day. It will be just like it was with Noah, the same day that Noah went into the ark. Okay, the fountains of the deep were broken up. The same day that Lot went out of Sodom, the Lord rained fire and brimstone and destroyed them, destroyed the cities. So you will see it's like that when the Lord raptures us, it will be just before the battle of Armageddon. And it becomes very, very plain. And you know something? I was relieved. I was thankful. I thought this was so compassionate of God to show us. Well, maybe I'm, maybe I'm unusual. But the thing is, if there's a storm coming, you would want to be warned about it. You know, in Acts, it's, uh, I'm not sure of the chapter. 
it might be chapter 12, uh, there was a famine. Uh, I think it was the prophet was Agabus. He said, the Lord has called for a dearth. It was a famine. And so they determined to send relief to the poor saints that were at Jerusalem and such because God called for a famine. Well, he took care of his people, didn't he? And so he can take care of us as well. And so we will be here through the entire reign of the Antichrist. The Antichrist will, will be revealed. I have found seven places in Scripture where the three and a half year time period is referred to. And what I've seen by Scripture, especially from the times in Daniel, I have seen that it is a little over three and a half years as, as we figure time. But God does deal in approximates. He does deal in approximates. Even as the children of Israel were about to enter the promised land, uh, to fight for the promised land and such, I saw the other day, it was at the 40th year and the 11th month after they had come out of Egypt, and we typically call it 40 years in the wilderness. Uh, these are approximate times, and sometimes uh, the time can also uh, be different by the way uh, we've recorded it. So I just wanted to let you know uh, why we have come to this conclusion, and that the pre-trib rapture has come about through private interpretation. I intend to do a video on this sometime in the near future. It shouldn't be a real long one, just to show you what private interpretation is. It's interpretation that, that doesn't have any biblical base, really. You can't even find it there. And that has happened a lot in certain elements of, the, of this uh, pre-trib theory. Uh, but the real problem with the pre-trib rapture is it sets up for the Antichrist. If the Antichrist returns when people are expecting Christ, they will be fooled. He is going to come with lying signs and wonders. He's even going to have a mortal head wound that is, that is healed. As we see, as it, as it seems from our watching on another level, somewhat through Scripture, there's going to be World War III, and then the Antichrist and, and uh, the one world government will take over. You can see how this is going to be a very compelling deception. And that's the problem with the pre-trib rapture. You're set up to being deceived by the Antichrist. And uh, so that is really, you know, what we're trying to warn of, what we're trying to fight against. Again, I tell you, I have uh, scriptures in the description for you to look at. Uh, please continue to have this in prayer. I just want people to know, may God bless you.